I want to show you what you can accomplish with a quick sketch in 45 minutes or less. This rendering was used in a design development presentation where a SketchUp model provided the background for me to embellish the design. Although it's not my own project, this has become somewhat a typical workflow where I can easily take a Coworks 3D model and inject character, mood, and entourage to it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Most of my illustrations and the professional work I do is done on the 11 by 17 paper size at 300 DPI. And the next thing I'm going to load in are my two SketchUp background, one with the line and the other one with the shadow turned on. And I do this as a private photo. And you can do that by left swiping uh, in the action panel. And the reason I do this is so that when I share this in a social media post, I don't see the SketchUp background and I only see the, the brushwork. Usually the artwork comes in as a full bleed, meaning it's from side to side. And I would like to do is just to make it a little bit smaller. So it has a little bit more border and white space around. And also just in case if I needed to draw outside of this view a little bit, I have some room for my pencil or the brush that I use to go outside of that border. Next, just reduce the opacity for the layer that you're going to be using as a background to trace on top. And to do any tracing, you always want to do it on a completely new layer and not on this base layer. So for me, before I actually get into the drawing and the illustration process, I'll actually spend maybe like the first minute or two finding a brush that I think is the right line weight for this illustration. And the reason I do that is some of the illustrations that I do will have more details. And if I wanted to show those details, I'm probably going to go with a thinner line weight. And other times when the artwork has a little less detail like this one I'm going to be drawing today, I'll actually select a brush maybe that is just thick enough where it doesn't feel like, you know, these details are underbaked, uh, if you will. After you decided what brush to use, and now this is really the phase where I am building the, the skeleton or the foundation for the drawing. And this is really meant for, you know, getting the bigger geometries down. So like the roof line, the, the walls, you don't really want to spend a lot of time doing the details just yet. Those will come later. And I usually find this phase kind of boring. So I'll have some music or even be watching like Netflix and YouTube while I'm doing this. And this will probably just take five to 10 minutes, just getting the outlines done. And what you really wanna be careful is to not add too much details. And sometimes you'll see that I may wanna draw something a couple of times just because the line wasn't exactly how I had imagined, if it wasn't too straight or curly or wiggly. So the benefit of this is if you are not totally satisfied with the kind of uh, line that you produced, just double tap and redraw that as many times until you are cool with it. When you feel like there's enough of the foundational geometry or the basic geometry is already drawn, that's when you can consider adding details to the drawing and you'll want to do this on a new layer. So for me, this started with just getting the stairs, uh, the vertical pickets uh, that are made out of steel drawn first. This is more of a personal drawing style. I actually like to dot in the part where it's cast a shadow in the model. So as you can see here, it's not exactly a continuous line, but it's a dash dot and a dash dot. The really cool part about this design is that there is a sort of an internal courtyard with a tree that kind of a spruce up from the floor below. So I just wanted to show a sense of the foliage that's popping up from that lower level. But, you know, this doesn't have to be very detailed. It's really a suggestive sort of a thing that some sort of a tree is going to be planted in the future. In the link below, I actually have a template for drawing trees. And in that template, you'll find my three ways of drawing trees and how I represent it and how I use them in different scenarios. So if you're not really comfortable with drawing trees, I highly suggest that you get a copy of that free template. And in the window area, I'm just going to add a sense of some, you know, background trees because I know 
that is actually a, a the rear yard for this house. And it's actually a very lush rear yard with lots of plants and trees, but you don't really want to draw those things in too much detail because it's gonna end up competing with the things in the foreground. So those kind of situations, you really wanna be careful with simplifying what you know is there and see. For a floating shelf like this or any sort of container in a house, I usually like to add in a few of these, you know, bowls or plates if it's for the kitchen, just so that it humanizes the drawing a little bit. If, if there's nothing on there, it feels really empty, but you can really do these sort of abstract shapes for bowls and um, or cups or flowers on, on the table that can really, you know, give this drawing a little bit more richness. For windows and glass, just a couple of diagonals to really symbol symbolize that that is a glass. It's almost kind of like the same thing with AutoCAD. This kitchen is really under design right now and hasn't gotten to the point where we, you know, laid out the oven or the appliances or what the cabinet's gonna be used for. But generally I do just to like add a little bit of details like the, the handles or the knobs for the oven and whatnot, just to give it a sense of kind of a realism in the drawing, but you know, you can tell the clients that this is still, you know, TBD, but it does look a lot better if you have these sort of uh, things in there as opposed to just having white cabinets. Same thing for this backsplash. You know, this backsplash likely is gonna be a tile, some, some sort of a really pretty tile that we don't know what it is yet, but just to give it a sense of texture, I'm adding this vertical line separated by a dot somewhere in the middle so this is sort of my go-to representation for some sort of a dense tile or texture. By the way, if you want to get deeper into this process, I have a link in the description below where you can download a similar interior illustration in the Procreate format file. So you can open this up on your own iPad. And in case you don't have an iPad yet, a Photoshop version of this file is also available. Now in the middle of this kitchen, there is a really long island and half of that is gonna be used for seating and the other half is gonna be for you know appliances and cabinets because it's not actually that wide. So here I'm just gonna add some plates in the half where there are counter seating below and having some books and plates just again humanizes this thing a little bit more. As for what this island is gonna be made out of, that's also TBD. But for the sake of the presentation, I actually just made it a, a wood veneer kind of a look just because I thought it looked better in the drawing. Now, the last point in this drawing is to load in a watercolor paper texture. And this is you know what I made for myself. And I'll put this on a blending mode, as you can see here. And this really will add a very subtle texture to make your drawing look less digital, if you will. And if you wanted to make this texture come out or read a little bit more, what we can do is go in your curve adjustment and just kind of tweak your curve like what I have here so that the texture um, pops out a little bit more. Make it a good practice of drawing on different layers. So this will be a lot easier if you need to edit your drawing later on once you had like a night of sleep or just rest for a couple of hours, you might come back and want to change some things and or add more details. Having a very kind of a non-destructive workflow will go a long way in your journey as an illustrator or a sketcher or a designer. So I would say I'm a pretty proficient sketcher at this point and knowing how to use Procreate really well. So you can see in this drawing took less than 45 minutes which if you ask me, I think that's really, really fast. And now I don't expect everyone else or, or you to be able to do this kind of drawing in the same sort of time frame, but it is possible as you can see. And a drawing like this compared to a SketchUp model that I showed you in the very beginning, there's a huge difference. And I think client will react to a drawing much, much better compared to seeing a SketchUp model devoid of any sort of a sense of emotion, materiality. This is why I am teaching this stuff to show you, you know, the transformation that you can have by adopting to this digital workflow and how that can impact your own design career, whether it's in school, in practicing as an architect or just running your architecture firm. This kind of workflow is really effective.
when you are all done with the drawing, you're happy with it, takes five seconds to export it as a JPEG and send it off to your computer. I use a Mac and I airdrop it. And then you can drop it into InDesign presentation right away. So what do you think of this style of representation for a client meeting? And if you're an architect or interior designer, what would this mean for you if you can recreate something similar using the same workflow as I have demonstrated here? I'd love to hear that in the comments below. And here is another video that I think you will like next. Check it out.